I have on there the book like, what do you call it? The book like cover? The book like what? <laughs> Clean, you know, soft, supple, delicious. <laughs> you know, I don't do corns. I don't do corns. We don't need random noises right now, you know? Oh, you can't even tell that one night stand's missing. Well, uh, that was like a regret. <laughs> What up, it's your girl, Minadivia, and in this video, we are talking all about some of my favorite Amazon purchases, must-haves, things you just need, and let's get into it. First category is tech. I purchased this field monitor because if you're like me, then you're always doing research on things that you need, like not even that you really actually need it, but you feel like you need it, you know what I mean? So I purchased this field monitor, which is perfect if you are going to be filming outside of your house, or even like right now, I posted you all up in the living room. So I could use the field monitor on top of this camera to see myself bigger. And it's a good idea for you if you don't have, let's say a TV monitor on your desk, if you're filming in the studio, or if you've got a camera that does not have a flip out screen. So my camera, which is a Canon 90D, I'll link everything I mentioned below, has a flip out screen. So when I look to your left, which is my right, I'm looking at the flip out screen. But the field monitor is great because it attaches right to the top of your camera and then you can see yourself if you don't have anywhere else to look to see what you're doing. Because of course you need to see if you are in focus, in frame, if the color is good, the background's good, the whole nine yards. Now, I did not keep this field monitor because I noticed that the color on the field monitor differed from the color that was on my actual camera monitor. And that to me was a problem because I could see both. I could see myself in the flip out and myself in the monitor. And the color difference was a problem for me because I'm always trying to make sure that my colors are the way, the color grading is correct, that my white is balanced the whole nine yards. So it was an issue for me, so I returned it. But I still wanted to mention that first because it is a great purchase if the color grading doesn't matter to you, at least when you're watching yourself on the screen, if you're going to fix it in post, if you just need a monitor and don't have one, that's a great one to have on the camera. Doesn't have to be attached to a desk. It literally, you, you know, you just pick up your whole tripod and move it wherever it needs to go in your house and film your content. Second item is this tripod that you're on right now. I love this tripod because not only is it heavy duty. It can also be used to film above head type stuff. So if you're doing cooking videos, journaling videos, what have you, this is a great option to be able to do that. So I love this tripod. I have two of these. One is in my bathroom that I keep there. And then the other one obviously is right here, right? That I use around the house to actually film my videos. Really heavy duty, just amazing. It is so sturdy and then it collapses very beautifully. It's fantastic. Comes with a whole bag that you can take with you if you're traveling, moving around to different locations, whatever. This is just perfect. You need a good tripod, it's important. And like I said, the camera, 90D, the lenses that I use will also be linked below. The next item is my microphone. So I have two of these as well because I have two different setups when I do my videos because it's just annoying having to move things around all the time. It just makes things easier for me. I need things to be as easy as possible, okay? So the microphone that I finally settled on because I've been I've used so many microphones, this is the Rode Video Mic Pro. Now, one headache about this microphone is that I have to remember to turn it on. If you've watched any video, mine or someone else's, and you hear the sound, that is because their microphone is not turned on. Nobody wants to film without their microphone turned on. Unless the person just doesn't know what they're doing, they're a beginner and they don't even have a microphone at all. That's a different story. But if they have one and it's not turned on, that's where you hear the because what's happening is the lens that I use, it's auto focusing and making that sound. Now, there are lenses that don't make that sound regardless, mic or not. I don't have that kind of lens and I don't care that that sound is made because I have a microphone. The whole point is to use the microphone but I do sometimes forget to turn it on. But the mic I have, I do love. The sound is great. You just have to put a sticky note somewhere like on your tripod or on your camera on the side to remind you to turn your mic on. Yo, it is so painful to finish a great video and then look back and you're like, I cannot believe my mic was not on. It is horrific. It has happened to me a handful of times and I pray it never happens to me again. Now I have mentioned this before, but I'm gonna mention it again. I have the, the Canon G7X Mark III. I love it because it shoots in 4K. It has image stabilization. Girl, when you're walking, moving, you're not doing this. You watch videos 
and the person's walking and then the video is also walking. I hate that. The video is stabilized. Love that. The video quality is amazing. It zooms in and out and it's small. So it's just perfect and, and compact. I'm not a Sony girl. I like to stick with Canon. So love that. That's my vlogging camera. I will link that below as well. I also have a GoPro. The GoPro 10 is perfect. It's waterproof, great for underwater activities, water activities in general. So when I travel and I'm doing something and it's you know, it's gonna be wet. I love to use that. And it's so small, it shoots in 4K. It has a front view finder. I can't explain it, you'll see. And I think that is so cute because it's so small and you can attach it really anywhere and take it anywhere. It makes recording so easy. And I thought to myself, I was like, why don't I vlog on my GoPro? Well, I had the G7X before the GoPro and I really could be vlogging on it. It has a microphone, the microphone is good. I just use that more for travel excursions type of thing. Things. And then I have my G7X for day-to-day -day vlogging and then my DSLR, which you're on right now for sit-down videos and reels. You just need to have a lot of stuff. And all these items you can get on Amazon. Links are below. And then my latest tech purchase is an iPad mini six. I love this thing. I felt like I wanted to get an iPad mini. I have an old one. It's like an iPad two. It's in the bathroom. I'm using it to watch videos and stuff. And then I was like, I want this new iPad because I want to do the writing on it that people do. It just seems so fun and cute. I did not know what I was missing out. I love using GoodNotes. I love using the iBook app because I want to read and I have lots of books. I love touching the books. I've tried Audible. It's just not for me, but if you are into Audible, fantastic, right? A great way to at least still be learning and growing. But I like touching the books. Well, with the iPad, I have on there the book-like, what do you call it? The book-like cover? The book-like, what? <laughs> The book like, you know what I'm saying? The screen thing, that thing. The book like screen thing, okay, I have that. And of course the pen, you need that. And I love using good notes. I love reading the books, highlighting. It's all nice and neat now, which is great. And then I can take it with me. I just love being able to have an intermediate. So not the actual laptop, not my iPhone, which is small. And I wanna keep my phone to be available for phone calls or recording stuff for, IG stories. So having the iPad is just so good. I try to keep it mainly for writing type activities. You know, my habit tracker, journaling, gratitude journaling, reading, that kind of a thing. And then there's the laptop, which is for other types of things. Listen, a lot of tech, right? They all have their purposes. They are all necessary. And I'm gonna link them below. When it comes to working out, I do have this really cute mini Adidas backpack. It is the cutest thing in the whole world. It's real small and it fits It fits a lot of stuff, okay? In here I have my resistance band and I use that when I'm at the gym. I put my GoPro and my GoPro tripod inside of here. I have charging cables and small blocks to put in the wall at the gym. It's just, it's small, it's cute. It fits really everything. This will also be linked below in all the items that I mentioned because you just need like a small athletic type backpack. I'm not about to go to the gym in my Fendi bag. You feel what I'm saying? This is cute. It just keeps it real sporty and cute. And it's still, you know, chic, stylish, all the things. I definitely love my Adidas original sneakers. I have it in black and in white. I can't lie. The white is so crisp. First of all, the gum sole, chef's kiss, okay? The white is so crisp. I have not worn them yet because <laughs> person like I'll buy something I love it but then I want to keep it perfect right and, and I don't want to mess it up but it's like I can just buy another one but I don't want to mess it up so I have not worn the white ones yet I have worn the black ones several times really comfortable really cute love how it hugs the ankles they were annoying to put on the first several times now that I've worn them for some time it's easier but the ankle is tight I don't understand what that's about but when it's on it fits really really nicely and I love the gum soles also want to share with you these retro sunglasses they come in a pack, different colors. They're really cute. Now I have to get used to them because of the shape of my head. I normally like to wear oversized glasses. These are not oversized, but they're a vibe. They're cute. I don't wear them that often, but you might wear them more often than I do. There's certainly still something to have. I just need to, I need to work them in a little bit more, you know, but really, really cute still.
Now here in the studio, these acrylic risers have been such a cute addition to my studio because where else am I gonna put all my fragrances? Like, come on, I even have one in the bathroom because I have a lot of fragrances in my bathroom that I use on a more consistent basis. And then of course, the ones that are in storage, if you will, in the actual studio. But these risers are really cute. There are different kinds. So you have the three tier, the four tier, some are wider, some are more narrow, but I love to have these. You can use these for nail polishes, lots of different things, you know? Of course. I'm using mine for my fragrances. And if you have some sort of storage area that you wanna make look a lot nicer, then these would definitely be a good option. And you can also put these in the kitchen to house your seasonings, really just anything. You can really just be creative. This is definitely a good find on Amazon. In the bathroom, Fola Hantas, honey, she had me influenced and I picked up this fogless mirror. What's crazy is I already have the same mirror, but on my bathroom mirror, because I use that on the side of me when I'm filming YouTube videos, but it never dawned on me to put a mirror in the bathroom, like in the shower. So I was like, bet, I'm about to get another one and put it in the shower, which I do. And I love it because then I can make sure that when I'm washing my face, my hairline is clean, I can just look and see what's going on. You feel what I'm saying? So the fogless mirror is really good for that. That. And again, it's fogless, it's just great. Also in my shower, I have a windshield car mount. Like you might be thinking, what, why? Yo, be resourceful. That is where I put my cell phone when I'm in the shower and I'm filming videos in the shower. Like tilt it so you're not showing, you know, so it's not soft porn. And then make sure that, you know, it's in focus. I do turn my camera around to film on the back camera. So the fogless mirror comes in handy because when it's turned around, I'm seeing the reflection of the camera in the mirror, honey. They're side by side. It goes hand in hand. It's perfect. And honey, we cannot talk beauty without targeting the feet, okay? This is not an area to ignore, all right? Let's get into it. So there are a few ways that I like to make sure my feet stay clean, you know, soft supple, delicious, like I just don't understand. You know what I'm saying? So first of which is the foot mask, all right? I haven't done one in two years. It's a problem, I understand. Let me explain. It takes like two weeks or so for the foot to actually peel off. And it's been summertime, you see what I'm saying? It's been sandals, heels, season, and I just don't have time to be out of commission. You feel what I'm saying? So that's the reason, but I am going to do one soon because I'm ready. My feet are not the kind of feet to look like I've been walking around on gravel for three years. It's not that case, but I just like for it to be extremely soft, clear, the whole nine yards, okay? So the foot masks are fantastic. Put them on, I like to go for an hour, take it off, and you will start to see your skin peel, and I mean peel all over. I mean on top of the toes, peeling. It's, it's jaw dropping. It is jaw dropping to see the amount of dead skin that comes off of your feet. If you've never done this, you need to do it. I gave one to my mom, she was just floored. She was floored to see how much dead skin came of her, of her feet. She's never done this in her life. So you know that joint was, <laughs> that joint was jointing. You feel what I'm saying? It was like, duh, you know? Okay, so you need to do one. Give one to mommy and daddy, grandma, grandpa, everyone needs to do it. It is very, very good, okay? So that's one way, and it's a very powerful way to exfoliate the feet. There are more subtle ways to go. So of course, you've got these pumice stones that, you know, they'll use in the nail salon. I don't go to the nail salon often at all, really. So I do this stuff at home, right? You can do the pumice stones. I've also got this Dr. Scholl's callus remover. That's really good for the toes. Say you've worn sneakers that have been uncomfortable, sandals, high heels, we know how that goes. I don't do corns. I don't do corns. So this Dr. Scholl's callus remover is perfect. Put it on really early, or if you didn't do it early and you have the corn, go ahead, girl, put it on. What it's doing is exfoliating the skin. So it is literally going to eat away all the dead skin that then hardens to make a callus. And the next thing you know, that area is peeling and you're not gonna have that callus. I don't advise you to do the foot mask and the callus remover, honey, pick one, okay? Because the foot mask itself is really, really powerful and strong. Do it, I'm telling telling you, you're gonna be blown away. But you gotta give yourself two and a half weeks or so for your foot to completely peel. I mean, it's it's like a gradual peeling and the peeling can start anywhere from three to five days after you have put on the foot mask. It's powerful. I'm laughing because that joint is serious. I actually look forward to doing it because it's like, it's one of those oddly satisfying nasty things, but you just need it because your foot afterward, forget about it. 
You're gonna be like, who is this? Like, I don't even know whose feet these are. You know what I'm saying? There's also an AM Lactin foot repair cream, which is great to be using in between things, you know, on a daily, weekly basis to help keep the skin on the feet from getting mad hard. You feel what I'm saying? And I have been using that, but I haven't seen that much progress because I know I'm just due for the foot mask. Now, when it comes to dental hygiene, honey, I don't play them games. You feel what I'm saying? Flossing is very important. Let's make sure we're doing that, okay? Every single day. Additionally, the electric toothbrush, I don't understand. We need to make sure we have that. That's very, very important to me. Again, I've mentioned this in the past. If you have a smartphone, you need to have a smart toothbrush. I don't get it. It's going to clean the teeth way better than the manual toothbrush. My dentist told me this and I was like, uh, I've been using it and I'm not, I'm not turning back. It is very, very true. Whenever I go in, she's like, your teeth are great. I'm like, really? Praise the Lord. <laughs> teeth whitening, we already know that. We've discussed this so many times. I'll link what I use below. To be honest, I have not whitened my teeth in a very, very long time. What I have I've been doing is maintaining the whiteness of my teeth by using these Colgate toothpaste. You know how you just buy what you buy and you just stick to it? And then I was like, oh, whitening toothpaste, interesting. And I've been using it and it works. Granted, I'll get close in the mirror and be like, I'm due for whitening, you playing games. Now you might think, what do you mean? I mean, I see the light stain on my teeth and I just haven't felt like whitening. Of course I can, I can do that because I've gotten myself to my desired level of whitening when I used to whiten all the time, right? If I was more yellow, like my teeth were yellow, I would whiten hands down and then maintain it with the Colgate toothpaste because this stuff works. It works. I have not experienced sensitivity from using it. However, you might. So definitely tread lightly. Interchange toothpastes. But thank God my teeth are strong. I haven't had the issue because I've whitened like a lot and it works really well. I go through so many of these. This toothpaste is really, really good. Oh my gosh. And this mouthwash, smart mouth mouthwash. I have never in my life used a mouthwash that works this well. Smart mouth mouthwash. If you want to do a sponsorship, let's go. Okay. Cause I'm ready. I have that on subscribe and save on Amazon. Do you use that? Let me know in the comments below. I have it on subscribe and save and it is coming through in the threes. Okay. We we are blowing through this stuff. It is so stinking good. It has two chambers, zinc and I forget, I don't know, one liquid is green, one liquid is clear. And when you pour it into the cup, they mix. Girl, it's the mix that just does something to the mouth. When they say it's going to give you 24 hours of fresh breath, they are not lying. I do smell mouth and can go eat and my breath does not even smell like the food. You understand what I'm saying? You know how you might eat something, you're like, oh, I can taste the, the whatever I just ate. No, 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 no. With smart mouth, no, no, it doesn't happen. It is so freaking good. If you've used this before, you need to comment and tell me what your experience has been. This is fantastic. I blow through it. I'm rinsing morning and night, okay? I don't think it's discussed enough. It's one thing for us to do our makeup, dress cute, go here, do our nails, blah, blah, blah. But yo, what does your mouth look like? You feel what I'm saying? This is barring any diseases, medical illnesses. I'm not speaking to that because that's different. I'm just saying for those of us who don't have those issues and you're just neglecting your dental hygiene, that to me is problematic. But I'm just saying with this smart mouth, mouth wash, you need this. And I promise you, you're gonna be blown a way. You need this, period, okay? Link is down below. So in the home, honey, we got some upgrades always, always trying to make things more comfy and cozy. One of which are the motion sensor lights. Love these. I've got two in the closet. So the bookshelf that's in the closet that has my materials and stuff on it. When I walk in, that comes on automatically. No need to put the actual light on. I've got them in the laundry room. When you walk in, two lights come on, boom. Got them in the guest bathroom, walk in, two lights come on, boom. It's just great. To me, I love an ambiance. I don't want all of the lights on all the time. I like a mood. You see what I'm saying? And these are rechargeable. If you have a high traffic area, of course, you're going to find yourself charging one or two of them more often than others. Yes. I'm okay with that. These are really cute. You need these. Definitely a good option there. I'll also link the lights behind this television because I do get questions about that. I've had this for a while. Really cute again. Just set the ambiance. And if you're wondering, this is a YouTube video. Just search fireplace. It does come with music, sometimes crackling wood, but I turn it off because hello, monetization or noises. We don't need random 
noises right now. You know, also wanted to share with you the links to these picture lights that are in my entryway. Love these, so affordable. You can certainly get these hardwired into your house itself, like your house, San Casa. But no, battery powered, honey, with a remote, baby. So cute, so sleek. Put them wherever. They just make such a difference. Again, the ambiance. You'll find yourself changing batteries often, recharging things often. I get it, right? But if you want the ambiance, great. If you don't want to do all this recharging, then of course, get an electrician and get this stuff hardwired into your house. That's a whole different story, you feel what I'm saying? But for now, you know what I'm saying? For the affordability purposes, we go on to Amazon. The links are in the description. Also for the vibe in the bedroom, I've got two wall scones. Same idea. I can charge them. They're motion sensor. These are bright. Like literally when you move around, if they're in your bedroom, when you move around at night, the light's coming on. <laughs> And because it's in the bedroom and it's a high traffic area, those lights do need to be charged more often than a few others. But again, I, it doesn't bother me. So those are really nice. The two wool chairs that I have in the bedroom are really pretty too. Just a good ambiance. I'm thinking about putting two pillows there. Let me know what you think, but that is definitely a vibe. The center table in between Amazon as well, a whole vibe. Oh, and the nightstands too, those are new. They're smaller than I expected because in relation to my bed, which is really high, the nightstands are small, but I like the color of them. I like the way they look. So I'm making it work. It did take some getting used to because the issue was when we got the bed set, we only got one nightstand because of how our broom was. We were like, oh, you can't even tell that one nightstand's missing. Well, uh, that was like a regret. <laughs> We've had this bed for a minute, okay? Anyway, these two nice stands do really look cute. I think you'll love them. They just, they'll be great if your bed is low. Our bed is really high. So I like them now, but they'll be even better if your bed is lower for sure. As far as hangers are concerned, if you're like me, you want everything to look the same, you know, go on other days where you are buying something from Home Goods or TJ Maxx and you're like, can I get those hangers? Who used to do that? I used to do that, like literally, faithfully. And you got all kind of eclectic hangers in the, in the, in the closet, mm -mm, can't do it. Now I need uniformity, praise the Lord. So I've got these white hangers. I can't lie though. So I have the white hangers. I have the rose gold hardware ones. And then I had that separate from the silver hardware ones. And I can't remember why I did that. It was like one was for winter clothes, one was for summer clothes. I don't know. I wish I had gotten just one, you know, the hardware would be the, the same color. So all gold, yellow gold or all rose gold, whatever. Either way, I love having these velvet hangers. I am eventually going to take one of the colors out to make it even more uniform. You get the idea. I just like having the velvet hangers. Stuff is not falling off, you know, spaghetti straps and stuff like that. It's just not sweaters falling down on the ground. Velvet hangers definitely want to have that. I have purchased several boxes of these because I have a lot of stuff. and. Yeah, just a must, you know? The little things, the little things. Grown up stuff, you know, grown-ish. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. grown-ish. Oh my gosh, when it comes to random stuff, I have this wig tripod. Now, <laughs> I've never had a wig tripod. And anytime I would see the girls on YouTube that do the hair videos, I'd be like, yo, that's real clutch. Like, I need that. And of course, I have the tripods that attach to the desk, which is great, but then that's in my studio. Okay, so when I'm doing my hair and styling something, a wig, obviously, <laughs> when I'm styling a wig in the bathroom, I can't use the wig tripod that goes onto a desk. So I said, self, let's purchase a wig tripod. And it's great. It's in my closet and I can move it into the center of the bathroom and style a wig and then put it on. And also too, my favorite black wig that y'all love. I don't have to curl as much because I was like, yo, why aren't I using the flexi rods? I put the wig on on the wig head, on the wig tripod, I put the flexi rods all around the wig and I leave the wig on the wig head on the tripod. So then when I put on this wig, it's already curled, it's already luscious, it looks fantastic. So having the tripod is amazing. So if you wear wigs, half wigs, whatever kind of wigs, and you style your hair off of your head, the wig tripod and the wig head and the wig pins it comes with, it's just all very, very necessary. Also too, even though we are being thrown into the fall and the winter season, if you live in a hot weather area like Houston or a different country where it's warm, you still need a fan, okay? And this fan I love because it's flat. So you know I have the other one that folds and sits on the table. Well, this one's not gonna sit nowhere. However, it's flat and it fits into most purses because the other one is just too chunky. I do have the one that opens and closes so it looks more like a cylinder. Look at me, a mom of an elementary student. I'm learning, I remember, cylinder. 
That one is okay, but it's round. This one's more flat. It just it just slides in literally like this, okay? Into your purse, takes up less space, and I love it. And it's also rechargeable. That was a long list. I hope that you found something in what I shared that you might wanna add to your home. If you have any other Amazon purchases that you have been loving, liking, all the things, I want you to come and let me know. I have Amazon Business Prime. I've got packages coming in all the time. I Ooh, that rhymed. Oh! Girl, I did, not even, I did not even plan that. That was not planned. Mm -mm, that was three boards. One, two, three, you know? I want you to let me know. I also have subscribe and save. Several things coming in on rotation. It just makes my life wicked easy. So if you don't have that, you may want to sign up for that, you know? Like your toothpaste, your body washes, your dish detergent, your laundry detergent, whatever you're always buying. Subscribe and save. It just makes life easy. Anyway, I'm going to leave two videos here for you to pick from to watch next. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.